Hey, this is Michael Dorinda. And this is Jake Bennett. And welcome to episode 161 of the North Meet South Web Podcast. Your camera's looking extra spicy today. Looking good. Spicy is not the right word, maybe, but extra <laughs> clear, clean, crisp. That's good. Well, it's good for it to be clean and crisp. But the downside, as I have just, just noticed, is that because it is crisp, it picks mm-hmm. up everything, like stray hairs, dust, and lint, and like... Mm. You know, you spend Ain't nobody got 30 time seconds. for that. Yeah. No. You've got to spend 30 seconds before every recording, like scrubbing all the lint off the brim of my cap because it's been need, cold. So we I need haven't a, worn uh, it for ages. It's just collecting dust. We need like a makeup artist, you know? Do you think the podcast could afford that makeup artists for us on Tuesday nights? No. No. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe we need to get more, more, more sponsors or something. I don't know. Any sponsors Maybe. probably. We'd probably Any be sponsors. We just good. do it. We do it for the love. We do it for the, mm-hmm. for the sake of catching up and it's true. Uh, sharing is true. amusing stories. Like my laptop earlier today locked up and I thought, well, while it's rebooting, I will go and fill up my water bottle, my water over here. And I picked it uh-huh. up, not realizing that I had, not remembering that I had just filled it up. <laughs> so it was full. And you know when you pick something up and you're expecting it to be light yes. and it's and it's heavy or you're expecting it yes. to be heavy and it's right. light and right. you just missed uh-huh. it? So it slipped out of my hand, dropped, water went, and it all oh over my, my keyboard. Gosh. Oh, so my gosh. So I'm like, oh, boy. So I had to pull apart the keyboard. I had to take all the keys off, cleaned it all off because there's, like, water in there. It's, it's And, like, it was due to cleaning. It didn't fry so it, though? Blew it all out. Well, I thought it was fine. I put it all back together. Put all the keys back on, turned it on, and everything seemed fine until I typed like C and then C and V pressed together and V and B pressed together, and then mm. B would double press. I'm like, oh no! So there's obviously water that's got into the keyboard into the Still PCB in that's causing it to like yeah, register bridge. across both. So I had to take all the keys off again. I had to unscrew the case so I could get in there, oh but my the gosh. PCB is is glued to the top of the case so i couldn't separate it to like clean you couldn't it out. separate it to clean it yeah and because yeah. it's like air maybe sealed. or something yeah i tried blowing air through it didn't work so what i did was i got Ree's dyson hairdryer and just blasted ah. that for a couple of minutes with warm air hoping that it would cause it to evaporate and fortunately it did so nice good call Good but yeah, it's, uh, it's clean, I was gonna say, it's popped dry, it in the oven for a few minutes. and Yeah, something like that. I'm like, <laughs> I don't have a bag big enough to put it in a bag with rice. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, just just hit it with a bit of hot air for a couple of minutes, uh, yep. enough to kind of dry it out without without melting anything. And uh, nice. yeah, it seems fine. And it looks good as new now, which is nice because, you know, you get it is it is disgusting. How many crumbs and things get into your oh, keyboard? Oh, dude, I don't even want to know. I, I know. It's like I see my keyboard at work. And now now that you're saying it, I'm probably going to have to go in and pull all my keys off tomorrow and just go. Although, I mean, like, what am I going to do? I'll hit it with spray. I'll hit it with canned air. I mean, it'll yep. probably be good enough. Good enough. I need yeah, to get something goes underneath my keycaps. Because, yeah, like, I've got one, one with, like, it's... air blower things. Yes. Just... Oh, nice. Does it work pretty but good? The... Yeah. Well, it did, except it, it went flat. <laughs> uh... I couldn't. I couldn't use it while it was charging, so I'm like, charge it a little bit, blow some air. Oh, it's flat again. Charge it a bit more, <laughs> which is why I went and got oh, the Dyson in. So yeah, yeah. Um, I need something. So like, my keyboard is so I got a Keychron K11 Pro, RGB and white backlit. Got two different ones. One at my north location office, one at my south location office, and um, the keyboard itself is like an aluminum frame, and then the the keys like sit above it you know what i mean they're like floating so it's not like yeah. it's inside there um and so you can kind of get under the keys which is nice because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. they're low profile caps yeah and so i feel like i could get under them pretty easily if i had a little tool or something that i could use to kind of just like yeah. get under the under the keys so that might so be maybe one, i don't right? even have to you take the them same off one? Exactly, exactly that's the same one do we have the same yeah. keyboard hmm. i think you did got you it swap? because i got it oh i probably did I probably did. Well, I think Hemp Hill also recommended it because it was the Alice layout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I got my I got one of my other developers a K15 Pro, which is like a seventy five percenter. 
Mm-hmm. So it doesn't have the numpad or anything like that. Because I figured like he won't have to go through all the pain of like remapping escape and things like that. Like yeah. he's not up for that probably. I don't, I, I don't think so. It still has the you know the function keys I think and the number keys and all that stuff and so he should it should feel pretty familiar pretty close to home yeah. but he had a um, Apple Magic Keyboard like full one you know the full size mm-hmm. one yeah, it was yeah. a black one it was really nice but the four key wouldn't work and as luck would have it four is the dollar sign and in PHP that's pretty important and so it was, he had to push like really hard on it in order to get that one to work yeah. so I'm like all right I'll just buy another keyboard so. So anyway, yeah, we'll see how that one goes for him. But uh, I'm still loving my keyboard. It's still it's yeah, still kicking, and great. I really love the customizations. This cap lock, caps lock for escape is the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. It is. For it sure. took me a while to yeah. get used to it, but it is really nice. Escape and super key, and so yeah, loving. I don't that. really still like. I don't that. have to do it often, but any any time I have to use like someone else's keyboard mm-hmm. or do something <laughs> on someone, else, I'm like, ah, why is why is this not working? <laughs> Yep, kind of caps lock. Caps I hit lock. caps lock so many times, like literally, and I'm like, oh, that's right, it doesn't do anything, and so, anyway, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's fine, it's fine, but it does it does take a little bit of like adjustment when you get on somebody else's machine and yeah, start messing with it, and uh, so anyway, so hey, you know does. what we've been using recently is we've been using Tuple a lot, actually, right? Yes. Good. Yeah, use it all the time now. And so the yeah. guys had convinced me they're like Slack sucks for screen sharing. They said the resolution is always absolutely horrible. Yeah. And they complained enough that I was finally like, okay, fine, let's do try let's try Tuple. I said if we don't absolutely love it in a month, I'm canceling. I was like, you guys are gonna have to convince me it's really worth it because you know, it's not the it's not the least expensive thing, I'll say. It's not the most expensive thing, but certainly not the least expensive thing. And so I freaking love it. It's awesome. And I am a believer. So I think the drawing on the screen is the biggest, like it's number one, the resolution is really good, but the drawing on the yeah. screen is really, really nice. Um, because it's so when, fluid and yeah, I use it when all you, the time. When you sit next to someone, you can point at their screen and say, oh, you know, yes. this thing here, but it's not, I think, I think Slack huddles has it now, but it's not quite as good and you're fighting like the quality and, 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 it, and the audio never works the first time and you've got to like, ah, oh, the, the screen share didn't work. I've got to stop it and start it again. All kinds of like just weird little paper cuts, but Tuple just always works. It's always high quality. Sounds great. Video works. Screen sharing works. I like that you can like, cause I'm on an ultra wide screen. So when I have to share stuff at work, when we're using Slack or Google Meet, it's like I can share a window, but then you want to swap windows. We got to stop sharing, and then you got to share the other window. Whereas I know exactly Drupal what you're saying. And you it's go, one of my yep, favorite I things. I just want to here's my my sixteen by nine section of the screen, and go from there. For for any of oh, the stuff that I dude, have to do for yes. work using Google Meet, I've got better display, and I and I have like a picture in picture virtual display that is a sixteen by nine that I just like drag what I whatever I need to in there. But it's just and it's fine now that it's set up, and it's just a pain. To, to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So like on Tuple, yeah, that's honestly like two, two of my favorite features. Okay. Okay. So let's just talk base features real quick here. And this is not a paid ad Tuple, but if you wanted to pay us, we would take it. We got makeup artists to pay for after all. So the, yes, video quality is great. Uh, being able to draw on the screen. Awesome. Um, I love the little animations they have, like ship it or like the little dog in the fire. You've seen that before? Like you kind of like, you ever seen those? No, like they're like no. reactions. They're right, reactions. Okay. And so like it'll like a big hand will come across the page and like stamp the screen and it says ship it. It's pretty funny. So they have those little things. Those those are fun too. But yes, sharing the screen. I'm on the ultra wide as well. And so sharing half my screen is the only thing I ever share. And it's mm-hmm. like you said, it's so nice to not have to share your whole screen. Uh, but to be able to share like half your screen and just drag things in and out of there. It's so nice. And then I can have like my documentation or whatever I'm looking at over on the right-hand side of my screen, which is super, super handy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can draw on my own screen. I think that's the other thing. With Slack, I don't think you can draw on your own screen, but with this one, you can, which is really great. So the only one paper cut complaint I have about this is you can't, there's no easy way to start a meeting with like sharing half the screen. Um, there is a shortcut to share your screen, but there's not a shortcut to share partial screen. It's, it says P, but I don't think mm. it works like that. So anyway, that, I wrote mm. that in actually as one of the things. Um, what was it? Oh, and then the other thing is App Veil. Have you used that before on Tuple? I haven't used it, but I have, I'm familiar oh, with it. Oh yeah. my gosh. It is good. Game changer. Yeah. Huge. Okay, so for instance, 
It's the most embarrassing thing if you are sharing your screen and then all of a sudden you have like a private message Slack channel thing that you were messaging somebody about that's not really anybody else's information. Not that it's like anything super private, but like there's just things that you wouldn't necessarily want the whole team to see that you've been talking. It could even be something as innocent as like PTO. Like, or like, oh, sorry to hear that's happening. Like, yeah, like no problem if you're off on Friday. You know, it's just, it's nobody else's business. And so, or, or, you know, you have like messages, like iMessage, like a personal message from like, hey, can you pick Graham up from soccer practice or whatever today? You know, that sort of stuff. It's like, and nobody else needs to be able to see that. And with AppVail, you don't ever have to worry about that being a thing. Yeah. Like you set up AppVail and you can say, these are all the things that should never be shown on my screen ever. So I have messages, I have Outlook, I have Slack, even my Notion. Notion, And, and then what you can do is you can throw it onto the screen. It'll show it with a um, little thing that says like, hey, this is being hi- hidden. This is being uh, veiled on your screen. And then the bottom right corner has a little eye and you can say reveal. And so you can yeah. reveal it just for that session. It's huge. I can't tell you how many times that has saved me from just like an awkward, annoying interaction yeah. that I don't, I don't have to be, I don't, yeah. I, I used to have like anxiety about that. Like, oh, I'm going to get some notification that's going to pop up that somebody's going to, it's like, never does that happen anymore because yeah. AppVail also will veil any notifications or any windows that belong to that, that thing. Yeah. It's huge. And I don't think anything very, else has that. Very thoughtfully introduced feature like it didn't always exist and i think i think that part of the catalyst was like maybe adam wallen complaining to to ben about it at some stage like i just wish i could hide stuff and they found a a a really good way of implementing it where it has a bunch of sensible defaults and and it makes it really easy to and obvious you know when something is veiled as well so you know, one password yeah, and messages and all of that. Yes. Like it'd be oh, nice yeah, right. if there was one this password, kind yes. of functionality if, for, for people that are streaming. Like the amount of times that, that I have seen someone streaming video that has like revealed a secret or something that they shouldn't have yeah. and things oh, like totally. that. Oh, so. totally. Totally. I mean, honestly, it, it is sort of mind-blowing that nobody else has done this. I haven't seen anybody else do this ever. Yeah. It is such a huge problem and nobody else is doing it. So... um Big, big, big key differentiator there. And like you said, it really is super well done. The way that they've decided to... So when somebody else is looking at it, it just says, this app is veiled. That's all it says. And then the fact that it shows me that it's veiled and then gives me an option to reveal it, like it's just really well done. And the thing is like... Mm -hmm. As a designer, as a developer, you know how hard it is, how many iterations you have to go through to get to that like perfect, like, oh, that's it. That's what it should be. And it just feels right. It just feels exactly like how it should be. Um, mm-hmm. And so I'm sure they went through a ton of iterations on that, but they nailed it. They freaking nailed it. And so I love that. So anyway, I'm a tuple convert, probably never going back to anything else, but it's really great. Yeah. I think by default, I mean, obviously, it's only going to veil the apps that are installed on your computer, but by default, it has a list of things, obviously, that it knows that it should be hiding. So 1Password, Keychain Access, Messages, Signal, Telegram, like all of those things yeah. are, are always um, always set by default. So, yeah, yeah. very, very good. And um, So do you guys use that at work then? you guys use Tuple at work? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's easier, unfortunately, just to use Slack. Because Whatever it, yeah. we're all already in Slack, and sometimes it's just like a quick five-minute thing, so we won't tuple. But um, I, I, I do use it on occasion, especially if there's going to be like some more in-depth or a longer session, or we're actually doing some pairing that that we need to, you know, go back and forth on things. It just makes it much easier, especially because like I'm on an ultra wide and and ultra wides at work and things like that. So you'd think it would be okay, but you don't necessarily want to share your whole screen, which um, it's like doesn't allow you to do it's like you can do a window or you can do a or a screen and and that's basically it you can't do a portion of the screen so um you know the ultra wide is good because you can put stuff to the side and have reference elsewhere that you know no one else sees but if you can't can't share it <laughs> well, you can't really share half way. of it doesn't matter yeah yeah like i need my editor up and i need my browser up and i can't can't do both so um yeah we i was do wondering more in-depth stuff yeah. Yeah. So, um, for us, we use Slack too at work, but we just have the pairing room that's kind of always open in tuple. Yeah. So you can have like rooms that are set up. Right. And so we've got like a pairing lounge, a stand up. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Pairing lounge, stand up and then water cooler. 
Um, I'm actually in, I'm actually in the pairing lounge right now. I just left. I was in it that whole time. Um, but uh, so then if anybody's in the pairing lounge, they're just like, hey, they're working on something. Everybody wants to jump in, kind of jump in here. But like what I'll do is in Slack, I'll start the, I'll, I'll go to the, uh, to the stand-up room and then I'll copy the link. And then in the main channel, I'll just do at here and then paste the tuple link and then anybody can mm-hmm. jump in that yeah. way. So that works. That works well. Um, yeah. yeah, we're kind There's of skirting of the- it because I, I have had, like a personal because work isn't paying for it probably forever. is the deal right yeah. so like yeah right that's that's yeah. the issue yeah and that yeah. was so our I've issue always, too is it was like some of I've us had it but most of us didn't yeah i've i've always had a personal license and i pay like once a year whatever that is plus the exchange rate is terrible now but you know i use it often enough that it's worthwhile um and so the people at work if we do need to do some more in-depth stuff i've just added them as like a guest and so they don't yeah, have okay. to pay for it. Kind of like Screen Hero, which was the spiritual predecessor of Tube. Yes, I remember um, that. Like it had that as well, where one person would pay and you could have as many guests as you want and invite them into your sessions and things like that. So, um, but we don't, yeah, we don't, it, it's not a work thing. It's just, it's it's a much more convenient tool for that kind of thing. Um, and I know that uh, Mitchell is doing work with like Laramates and, and trying to make, um, are the Laravel developers more discoverable, you know, yes, and, and yes, putting uh-huh. open slots like I am, I'm free to pair. Or I, you know, I have experience with these packages and things like that. So you can reach out to people and, and connect and do the screen shares and things like that. So it's, it's a really convenient way, like just to jump on a video chat. You know, we use Riverside for the, the podcast for this one for Laravel news. I use it for ripples and it, and it just makes it easy to get anyone on without having to install any software or remember yeah. to like open yep. QuickTime and record things like that. Like it all just works. But in terms of software that just sits there and you can just jump into a pairing session with anyone, Tuple is is certainly the the preferred because you don't have to worry about, I mean, other than sending them the invite and having them install the client on their computer, it's not like you have to invite them into your Slack or, you know, set up a Google yeah. Meet or you know, do a, a telegram video or whatever. It's, it's all just like there to go. Yep. Okay. One more thing for those of you who are dealing with teams and are, um, you know, doing screen share things. Here's a huge culture tip for you. If you do not play a game daily with your team, you should. Hmm. May I recommend one? Um, and the only reason I say this is because we play this game every day and it's so freaking fun and it is a great team spirit sort of thing. It sounds so dumb. It takes probably five minutes every day, yeah. but we are so competitive in this game and it is a blast. It's like one of those culture things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just funny. Like different teams have different things that they do. I know like the Laravel team, like it is, you know, morning. I think it's like one of the things like Taylor puts out like, or maybe it's just like a sunrise or something or like, you know, just the different emojis you have throughout the day or that you kind of, you know, those inside jokes sort of things. This is Mm -hmm. one of those things. And we were using this, uh, this application before we used tuple. So it's called around. Have you ever used that before? I've heard of it. I think you mentioned it before. A screen sharing app called around and it's okay. It, It works fine. Like we used it for a long time. Um, but one of the things they have in there is they have games that you can play. And the game that we play every day is called Boom Party. And it is so fun. So it's Bomberman. It's like old school Bomberman where you mm-hmm. kind of, there's a bunch of boxes on a screen and there's this little like map with like a maze sort of configuration and everybody starts in like a different corner. And then you start with one bomb and that's it. And so you blow up boxes as you, <laughs> thanks Apple, give me a thumbs up uh, reaction there you blow up boxes and get additional power-ups and then you kind of go and try and take out the other players, right? And so we play three rounds and at the end of each day, uh, at the end of each game, after we've played three rounds, uh, we will put emojis into the main channel. Uh, everybody, Everybody's face, everybody pers- every person has their own emoji with their face on it. Mm-hmm. So we'll put their face and then we'll put how many rounds they won. And if somebody happens to win all three rounds in one day, which is very rare because everybody knows that by the time they've won two of them, everybody's out for blood on that third round, right? (laughs) And uh, if anybody happens to win that third round, you get a crown, you get the crown and then your face underneath it. So you like, you win the crown for the day and it is a coveted 
possession, that crown, and it is a big, big deal. And it is so fun. I love playing that game. It's literally, I look forward to it every day. And all the guys on the team say the same thing. They're like, that's like one of my favorite parts of the day. It's so fun. And so you should try it. It's free. Around is free to try. Mm -hmm. And um, just try the game with your team. Try it for a week. And I promise you, once you start doing it, everybody will want to keep doing it. It's so fun. And I know Wilbur Powery, um, he suggested it to his team at mm -hmm. Give Butter. I think, and they play it every day now, I think, or not every day. They don't have a stand up every day. They have, you know, every time they do have a stand up, though, a big stand up, they, they all play together. And so it's super fun. If you happen to have a daily stand up, great. If you don't, maybe you should have one just for the sake of having Boom Party. But any case, it's a blast. You should try it sometime. A lot of fun. We'll, uh, we'll have to check that out. Uh, yes. I'll, I'll yeah, put a link should. in the. Um... <coughs> Over there. <coughs> <laughs> I have no idea why so I've lost my voice again. <laughs> <laughs> you got to eat that water, dude. Oh, my gosh. You got a frog what? in your throat. Got a kangaroo oh, in your man. throat. It's still there. Holy cow. Back. All right. It was oh, just, my word. Something went the wrong way. <clears throat> oh, that's so um, Yeah, I'll put a link in the show notes. It, it looks looks good. It looks like they've been, I don't know how recently, but they have been recently acquired by um, Miro. Yeah. yeah, they were acquired a while ago. Um, yeah, okay. And so it's probably over a year ago. And so, but oh, they still have okay. a free tier. Yeah, they still have a free tier. Yeah, and it works, yeah, it cool. works fine. We'll we it use it for Mira, like, you know, like, like the whiteboarding, whiteboarding. Yeah, piece. that's right. Collaborative that's correct. whiteboarding. Yeah, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, cool. We'll check that yeah, out. Very good. Um, yeah, good. So now that we've uh, covered kind of like our intro here, um, I was going to say that I had one other thing we could talk about, but if you have anything on your docket, I would love to hear about it before uh, I start I had, jabbering. I've just been in like uh, rounding error hell for the last three weeks, which I think maybe I mentioned mm. last time. I don't really want to talk about it, but if anyone has to deal with like currency and rounding and any of that stuff, it's all awful, especially when you're trying to compare like the output of what you have done with an Excel spreadsheet. And if you've ever looked closely at what an Excel spreadsheet does, it is kind of grim because it hides all of the decimal places when you're working with currency yes. and just oh shows you like two. And sometimes the actual value that has been obfuscated has got five decimal places and sometimes it will have yeah. three and sometimes it will have four. And so... Just trying to get anything to match Is there up. like any sort of standard agreement on how many decimal places are significant, like when you're dealing with banking and, and numbers? Like, currency? I mean, we, a, a long time ago, we, we worked with like four decimal places so that any of the rounding would happen on the third decimal place. And so any of it would be insignificant in the context of a system of, you know, dollars and cents, where it's typically two decimal places. Um, sure, sure. The problem is when you're trying to match with third-party systems and they say like mm -hmm. they show you the rounded value, but you don't know how many decimal places they've worked with to arrive Very at sad. that yeah. Yeah. situation. Um, it's just a mare. So, but no, that <clears throat> that has been a lot of my last two, three, probably even close to four weeks, which I'm, but I don't like it. Um. The solution is not to work in cents in this scenario because there's like multiplication and we're calculating interest. So it doesn't even matter if you start with cents because eventually you end up with decimal places. We've tried with like rational numbers as well. Um, there is the brick math library and the brick money yeah, library that yeah. works with, you know, rational money and rational. And d define numbers. for me, what do you mean by rational numbers, rational money? So, what, what is <clears throat> like rational numbers? Fractional values? Yeah, it's, essentially it, it doesn't have. How am I going to explain this? It doesn't work in dollars and cents. It, it basically takes integer values and says like this is um, 100, right? So $100 becomes 10,000 cents, right? Uh, and then it, is that right? Or yeah. is it 1,000 Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. 10,000 nope, cents. Yeah. Yep. So you have 10,000 cents and then it's got like a an ord – I think it's called an ordinal. I don't know. And it's like slash 1,000 or well, slash 100. So you know that this is like actually $100. So all of his oh, internal okay. calculations are done with like whole values to like maintain that precision. And then at the end, ah, you do okay. the rational numbers. Yeah. So like rational meaning ratio, right? So like number over a number, right? That's yeah. a rational number, yep. I suppose, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. So we use those rather than floats or anything like that in order to kind of 
yeah. maintain the precision until the very end mm-hmm. when we then round yep. that for display, which is fine, except when you've got like a schedule of, of payment amounts. And so everything is fine. But then for presentation, obviously, you need to round it to yeah, two decimal to places. It, yeah. And then if you add yeah. all those columns up, they don't balance <laughs> from top to bottom. Uh, yeah. Because the, cause the, cause the, the fractional values are different. So if you say like if you start with right, so this is geez. for financial calculation. F- so if you're saying geez. like I've borrowed fifty thousand dollars and you calculate your principal repayments and your interest repayments and all of that kind of stuff, like the, the, the total of all of those individual principal amounts should not exceed fifty thousand dollars. But because of rounding and presentation and stuff, if you take all that stuff, throw it into Excel and then you do a sum on the columns, you might yeah. find like it's a few cents more than fifty thousand or a few cents less than fifty thousand, but it but it has to be exactly fifty thousand. If you do the same thing in Excel, because it's showing you to two decimal places, but it's actually doing it in four or five yeah, or, or yeah. six, you add all those things up and yes, it does match up. And so you're trying to compare and you're going crazy. And it took me like a few days to realize that this was happening, that, you know, Excel is showing two decimal places, but it's working in multiple. And right. Yeah. Then, you know, all of those fractions of a cent do add up to the very round number. Actual sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, you know, Boy. where we've arrived is, and this as best is as it, Did you arrive at like putting a disclaimer on it, which says like, don't throw this in an Excel spreadsheet and add them up. <laughs> well, I said like, why don't we just put a disclaimer on here that says these are indicative values only or whatever, but that, that apparently is not good enough. I think what we have arrived at is the generally accepted practice is to take is to balance basically the final payment. So make sure that the sum of all of your payments ah, add up to whatever interesting. it is. And then take any overage and apply it to the interest. And so it's the interest, the interest amount will be, you know, plus or minus the, three the, cents of the yeah. calculated value. But the principal, which is the amount that you have borrowed, will never exceed. Like it will always be exactly correct. And you just take that um extra and move move it to the interest payment. Dude, that's hilarious. I wonder how many board so, meetings that took to determine that. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that's a general, really interesting way. So that's like a final number, like the final checksum. It's like, yeah. okay, this one will just but, make I up mean, for all the other odd pieces. Yeah, generally speaking, in my experience with that kind of stuff, like when calculating sales tax and things like that, the the general expect, ac- accepted um, behavior is that you can expect values across a row to match up so like the mm-hmm. the the tax exclusive amount the tax the tax amount will add up to the total like that left to right will add up yeah sure yeah or top to bottom you can expect things to add up but it, they will never go in both directions mm. you will get a rounding error one way or the other so there's there's yeah it's 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 just it's all fun and games, um and and like so the accepted practice generally from an and I'm not an accountant but my understanding is that the general accepted practice from accounting point of view is to be consistent with whatever decision you make. Like if you choose to make sure that things add up yeah. directly this way, it makes sense. Then make sure yeah. everywhere everything always adds up this way. If you choose yeah. to make sure it adds up this way, make sure it always adds up this way. Um and and that's, decide on a convention and stick with it. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, the, the tricky thing is cause we're like putting these schedule payment schedules together and comparing it against external systems, like different lenders will do it different ways. Um, and so it's very hard to kind of marry up because there's no consensus. Like one lender might round up, one might round down, one might just yeah. chop the value and not round at all. Um, truncate, yeah. Yeah. So they just truncate, you know, 0. 0.556 instead of making it 0. 0.56. Or making it 0.5, they'll just like chop that six off and make it 0.55 and leave it at that. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably hard depending to, on which way it's going, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah. And is it like, and 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 in yeah. some situations you would round in the favor of the person receiving the payment, and sometimes right. you round in favor of the person making the payment. Correct. So yes. Like, like which way is the payment going? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Boy, that is some freaking tough problems to deal with. Um, the rational stuff sounds really interesting. Um, that sounds really cool actually. Yeah. And that's, I've never thought of using that as a way to preserve the, you know, actual values until the last second, which is really smart. The other thing that I read recently is some guy was talking about comparing float values and he was like, you don't ever compare equality with floats. He's you subtract them and then you look at the difference and determine if it's within an acceptable range to be equal. 
Like, so he's like, I'll subtract the two floats. If they're, if the difference between the two floats is less than 0. 0.0001, they are the same. You know, so he never compares equality. He's like, cause there's just these weird errors where you're going to end up with them not being exactly equal. And he's like, that's okay. Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes it doesn't matter. He's like, you have to, uh, you know, you have to determine what, sig what a significant decimal place is and then compare the two, the difference between the two of them and see if it's less than that difference. And if it is, they are equal. So yep. I was like, oh, that's smart. That's yeah. a cool way to do that. Yeah, Wiz, Wiz Boss has been talking about this on, on Twitter recently oh, really? as well. Um, and he's like, you know, if you do 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, it may or may not equal 0 0.3, depending on what language you're working in. Like in PHP, I think it's 0 0.000, no, 0 0.03000000004. So. Oh, gosh, seriously? That's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's, I think the reason, right? So that's why you do the difference and then, and then calculate is because it's, you know, you can't guarantee that they're going to be exactly equal. So anyway, fun times, fun times. Okay. I will keep this part brief. I will launch into my quick little discovery today of what we discovered when we were trying to use pint, Laravel pint mm -hmm. or pint, depending on how you want to call it, but I'm pretty sure it's pint. Um, for your code linting. So we have a new project and we are setting up new tests and CI stuff. So we have our pest tests and then we have PHP, sorry, Laravel Pint for our code style. And then we have um, PHP um, Stan, sorry, for our static analysis stuff. Okay, great. So yep. all fine and good, whatever. Um, well, in the... If you go to Laravel Pint's documentation, at the very end, they have a GitHub action that you can copy and paste into your into your, you know, your YAML file. And, and what it'll do is it will run on your pull request commits. And if it detects changes that need to be made, it will auto commit those changes to a new commit on that pull request. Mm -hmm. Cool. That works great. However, the action that is being used to commit those changes to the pull request um, has a known thing on the readme where it says, if you use this action to make a commit, commits created by GitHub Actions will not invoke a new workflow, a new GitHub workflow. And the reason why is because it would be possible for you to accidentally create a loop where you are committing and then making a change and then running a new workflow and then it is committing and making a change and running a new workflow and you get into this infinite loop and you eat up all your GitHub minutes in a matter of a day, right? And so it does not allow it to kick off a new workflow on purpose. However, the way around that is to create a personal access token and then store that in a, your repository as a secret, an action secret. And then you reference that secret when you are doing the checkout action, the checkout step at the very top of your flow. You have to say token, and then you have to use the secrets dot personal access token. And then if you do that, when it does the commit, it will allow the commit to invoke a new workflow. Okay, so that was the first discovery. So that was interesting. Um, and uh, then I was like, well, it's kind of annoying to do that anyway, honestly. Um, I don't really like that. It, it happens on a very regular basis where you push code and then there's a new commit upstream and you don't realize it. And so you make a bunch of changes on your local and then you go to push it again and you have to rebase. It happens all the time, all the time. Um, and not just on this project, but a lot of projects where we're using style CI and things like that. So that, the auto commit thing up on the, the master or sorry, up on your pull request that just auto commits it. It just is really annoying, honestly. Um, so what's the solution to this? Well, you can do like a pre commit hook, like a Git hook, right? But those are always a bit unreliable because how do you sync those across your team, right? You can't yeah. like, yeah. You, you can't do like dot git slash hooks. You can't commit that into your repository. So what's a, what's a guy to do? A couple options. You could use Husky, which is a node dependent um, package that will allow you to sort of sync those git hooks across your teams um, by committing it to the repository. Or you can use Whiskey, which is Len Woodward's 
uh, implementation of it using PHP. So you don't have to have a node dependency for a strictly PHP project, um, although that's almost not ever going to be a thing anymore, especially if you're using Laravel. You're always going to have some sort of node dependencies, but um, Whiskey works really cool. So it creates a whiskey.json file uh, where you can define all the different, um, uh, you know, Git uh, events, I think is what they'd be called, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can specify particular scripts that should run when uh, one of those things happens. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so far we've got figured out how to get Pint auto committing. Sort of said, don't really like that, but how would I get around that? Okay, well, let's run some get stuff locally. Um, you know, let's run, let's run pint locally um, when, uh, when somebody does a pre, it's as a pre commit hook, right? It'll yep. do, it'll do pint. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to continue to leave that uh, style, that, that CI action in there, but now instead of it committing anything, it's just going to fail. So instead of using yeah. PHP, or sorry, instead of using pint um, repair or whatever it is, mm -hmm. we're just going to use pint test. And pint test will just return a non zero error in the case that it doesn't work. And so yeah. uh, it's up to the developer then to fix that problem. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's how it works. Now, what I will say is there's, there's two things, there's two ways that you can run, there's a lot of different ways you can run Pint. One of them will fix the error, but it will return a zero um, from the Thanks. action. So yeah. it just shows you like a green thumbs up, everything worked and we changed, made these changes. The only issue with that is if you do that as a pre-commit hook, you make your, you know, so like I'm getting ready to make a commit and push this, blah, 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 here's my changes, get add all, get commit. It runs its pre-commit hook and changes two files. And then I guess say git push, right? Because I don't realize that there's two files out there that it just changed that I need to also yeah. commit, Yeah. right? Yeah. So if I do that, I git push it and what happens? Well, it fails in production again. Dang it all, that's not what I wanted. Like, mm -hmm. so what I'm doing now is instead of having the pre-commit hook be like a just repair it and return it with a zero, I'm gonna do the non-zero based thing. So if there is a change, it won't actually commit, it'll wait. It'll say, nope, you gotta add these two and then you can commit. So it's a little more obvious that there was files that changed, it like failed, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to add them and then, uh, and then you can commit and push them. So whew, that's it. Um, but what I will say yeah. is Whiskey is pretty sweet. So because, um, because you install it with Composer and because any of your developers, when they merge in the main branch, are gonna have to run Composer install, you have the uh, Composer stuff that after you have a you know update or you have a after an install you just run whiskey update and when you run mm -hmm. whiskey update it runs the whiskey stuff and then uses that whiskey.json to update their git hooks so anybody who's in, who installs automatically gets those things updated on their git yeah. hooks and so it's yeah. easy to manage those things across the team so it works really well and um we're going to try it out we'll see how it goes yeah. And I will report back if we have any issues. But that's been that's been cool. I was uh, that was really <laughs> kind of a fun little side quest today. Got that all figured out. Yeah, like I mean, we we will just fail CI like the whole whole thing if there is um, static analysis failures or if there is pint failures, and and then it's up to the developer to you know run that stuff. I in theory like the idea of a pre commit thing, but. I commit a lot and I it would be agitating to to have pint run on every commit. Um and, and I also like the idea of running tests because we often will forget to run tests or we will change some code here and it will affect something over there unrelated in some unexpected way. And so the only time that you will see that is when it fails in CI. Yeah. Um, but it in CI it takes, you know, ten minutes. 12 minutes for the test to run locally in parallel. It still takes five minutes. So you can't really have a pre-commit hook that is running tests in this code base every time you commit. Cause yeah, it's, it's just, there are trade-offs to be made at any yeah. and every junction of, of, you know, what you're willing to, to do. And like, if I'm changing some significant stuff, I will, you know, make all of those changes and then run the full test suite. And then, you know, just go get a drink of water, whatever else for, for five minutes to come back and, and see yeah. how it's all gone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's funny 
how many times you get someone open a pull request, say this is good for review while CI is still running. And then by the time you get to looking at it, you're like, is it, is it good for review? Did you run the test that you wrote? Because <laughs> there is a failure here that is part of the code that you have just introduced. <laughs> yeah. So I have three other trade-offs that we actually made that, that helped with some of those. So the first one is conditional job running. So we have a conditional at the very top of our job that says like, if this PR is in draft status still, do not run this job, right? So we do that, that helps. So like we're not actually yeah. running our CI stuff on every single commit and wasting all those minutes. It's like only yeah. when they say it's ready to go, are we running that? And so that saves on, you know, they'll probably have 20 commits before they actually end up hitting any yeah. of those. So that's one. The second thing is on the pre-commit hook, we are running pint, um, only on the dirty files. So you do dash dash dirty. And that does save a lot of time because it doesn't run it across your entire code base. It just says you have three files that changed and it's yeah. lightning fast, super, super fast. And so um, that's helpful. And then the last thing that we do is in the do, in the case you do have a lot of commits that you're kind of pushing and um, you're maybe you're in a status where like you're not in a draft status anymore. And um and you know you have uh, a test that's or you know one of your CI things that's failing. So this happened to me today. One of my CI things failed. The one that returned the fastest failed. Pint. And then I pushed up another commit. Well, I noticed the old jobs were still running. The jobs for the previous commit were still running, even though I had a new commit on after that. And so there was one other thing I discovered today it was on GitHub Actions. You have a thing called concurrency, and so you can define like a workflow key that will say if there's any other workflow keys that look like this, then you can cancel. You can cancel yeah. any previous workflows. And so um, what that does is it, it turns the little, like next to your commit, you'll have either a checkbox or a yellow if it's currently running, or you'll have an X if they were canceled. And so if you make a new commit while the other ones are running, it will cancel out those previous workflows. And uh, that saves you your GitHub minutes and um, stops you from running multiple tests, you know, chewing up your... Um, your concurrency limits as well, because you can only run so many types at the same time, you know? So yeah. you, you can hit that pretty quick if you have a bunch of developers working on a bunch of different things across your organization. Yeah, definitely. That was, yep. a good, that was a good deep dive today. I should write something up about that. There's a lot of stuff I learned today. I should write that up. Yeah. Make a video, something. Do something. Put some, put some content into the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, dude. That's all I got today. Excellent. Well, should we call it? We should. You're off to Laracon, what, Sunday? Uh, you get in Monday? Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. So I'm getting in Monday. Uh, I'm leaving Monday morning, bright and early. I'll get down there about nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then heading out Thursday afternoon. So should get a little bit of pre Laracon time, a little bit of post Laracon time. Hoping to get to hang out with the homies a bit. Should be. Nice. Should be fun, and uh, I need to get one of those like cutouts of like your head. You know what I mean? How they put like the you know at the games, you know, at, like yeah, the yeah. basketball games and stuff. Just hold it up in the, head. in the crowd. <laughs> yep, exactly. I just need to get a cutout of your head on one of those. <laughs> just take it with me. Be like Michael's here in spirit. I'll send you a photo. You can do it. Do it, <laughs> dude. That would be hilarious. I literally should. That would be awesome. <laughs> be so funny. People oh, lose their minds. Hang on. Here we go. You gonna send it to me? Nice. I love it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, good, good idea, though, right? I mean, come on, we should do that. I mean, I could flat pack it, just put it in the back, put you know, put yeah, it in yeah. the, the suitcase, no yeah. big deal. I'm I sure could get could pictures with you. you I could there? get pictures with you and me and and other people, like the whole Cash Money co work or whatever. I could get like a picture with all of us. That'd be great. That would be so funny. <laughs> that would be that would be amusing. Um, yes, <laughs> I want to see photos from. <laughs> from Laracon with just yeah with his Michael big dumb head of mine Eric you mean Eric crowd. me yeah, Eric Barnes that'd be great the Laracon the Laracon I'm, sure, I'm sure Yaz will will take some photos for us yeah that'll be fun so he's gonna be there this year again huh he wasn't there last yeah, he's year coming. I don't think yeah. so yeah he's he's coming he's taking photos as as far as I as far as I know so yeah Bill sure Condo was there Yaz last year so, running around yeah that'd be good. And, uh, that That's will good. be good. That's good value. Well, enjoy. Uh, it's looking like it's going to be a very big event, you know, not just the number of people, but also the the hype around everything that is going to be announced and released and, and the yeah, competitions yeah. And, and the basketball game 
you know, I'll probably catch. Tell, okay, so tell me about this recording. basketball game because I've heard things. I don't know what is going on with the basketball game. So if there's a basketball game going on, I'm taking my shoes. <laughs> so I I think you've you've missed you've missed the I think I think you've missed the yeah um, right the try yeah, right like somebody's not going to show up and like uh not need a sub or something I guarantee it. Oh, they so Sentry is like running this thing now. It's like this this big thing. It's the terminal terminal coffee lads said you know we we should have an open source basketball game and so um adam i don't i don't know his last name but adam who's like uh runs stat or created stat muse and and things like that like he does a lot of content these days um he he used to play like varsity hoops so there's like some serious serious uh chops in in this game it's not just uh I don't know what they're playing for, uh, but it but it's going to be on at like four thirty a.m. It, my time. So hopefully I can. Catch so it's some. like it's like a so so you're saying it's not like just a bunch of guys playing pickup basketball. This is like serious people playing basketball. Serious people. It's like there's tickets for it. Wes Boss and um, Scott. What the Zinsky, heck? Where is this who, at? Like, Where am I? Am I missing banner. this on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or is this oh, like? Hang on. We'll okay. include a link in the show notes. Um, Twitter Sentry. Are they just twitter.com slash Sentry? X.com slash Sentry? No, Sentry IO maybe? What are they? No. Oh, my God. I might be able to find it now. Here we go. Sentry. It's the, they've got like this branding for all of it. It's presented by Sentry. Um, it's called Null Star 2024. I'll send you this link. Um, but yeah, Wes and sorry, Stalinsky people who are watching the live stream, my version. my screen is like jumping all over the place because my keyboard is on my you know monitor and it's going wild. Um, so yeah, there is. Where's it at? They're hosting this like on a court. There's going to be refer like it's going to be a referee. Oh, game. okay. So they challenged Laravel PHP, like the actual. Well, is that mm-hmm. the community or the actual team? I, I I don't I don't know who the team is to be honest. They haven't. I don't think like there's been talk about different people saying they're involved, but I the, I don't think they've put the actual lineup in. But they're like they've got a court. Um, it's a community basketball event, so there's going to be like a three point shootout. There's an inflatable dunk competition. They have an open court. Um, that they, they, they're streaming it. Like there's there's a whole whole thing. We'll put the link to all of this stuff in the in the show notes. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sad. Oh that it's I I planted the seed with. With Re, I'm like next year. This would be a business expense for me to go to Laracon US. Mm-hmm. And I should mm-hmm. definitely go to learn how to run a conference before I run any more conferences, kind of things. <laughs> but but the live will have just started school around you know Laracon time, July August next year. So may not may not be practical. But uh, I'm hoping that. <laughs> that I, who knows what will happen next year? Like it's going to be a completely different thing. But um, yeah, it's just crazy there's all of this stuff it's funny because there's not a lot of like advertisement around this like it got 151 likes and 45 retweets but there's only 13 replies and there's yeah, but that's just twitter being twitter these days like the algorithm algorithm's busted it doesn't show anything to anyone you miss things all the time so okay, anyway well, i'm on the i'm on the this, invite list i'm on the invite in, list for for it so there will be a link in the show notes you can check it out it says there's 75 there. people going. Hmm. Okay. Well, should be fun. Should be a freaking great time. So I'm putting it on my calendar here. Hopefully no one gets injured. Everyone would definitely warm up and, and have a great time. And, you know, you know the deal. You know, honestly, dude, I, you know, I, so <laughs> I was actually thinking about this. I was like, because I had heard uh, Daniel and Caleb talking about this on No Plans to Merge. And I was like, is there really a basketball game going on? Like, is this a thing? Like, I would actually love to play. And then I remembered, like, I was playing on Sunday night and, like, this last, like, what, two days ago? And, mm-hmm. like, got slightly injured. And also, I have a very difficult time turning off my competitive, like, yeah. bone. And I sp- and so, like, I'm afraid people would be like, dude's a douchebag. Like, can't, like, like you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, you'd hate to, like, body somebody under the hoop and, like, hurt somebody. And then, like, you're known as the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, the so guy, I was yeah, like, eh, And it'll be strange. Probably. Like, it'll be seen. Everyone will know. <laughs> yeah, probably better I've, I've than had to I'm pack not it in. playing. I can't I'm not, play anymore. 
Yeah, I, I don't. It's probably not a good idea anyway. So, but you know yeah. how it is. It's the FOMO. You know the FOMO. It is you know how it is. Oh, it's I, like if there's anything I, fun going on, it's like you want to be. <laughs> You're I like, believe me, dude. Se- I, I have know such the FOMO. FOMO. I started oh. my own conference. Okay, I know oh, exactly. Gosh. But I can't yeah, play. Yeah. And and when I like, I went and, and I had the scans done, and went and saw the surgeon, and he's like, "Look, do whatever you want. Um, if you don't pull up after it." Maybe don't do that again. I will at some point have to have surgery. Um, It's just like, will it be in three months or will it be in 10 years kind of thing? So stopping basketball, unfortunately. And I told a friend of mine this. He goes, do you know that there's like walking basketball? No, no. Is there for real? It's walking basketball. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. Like I cannot. If you're not going to play to the like the full extent of your ability, then then like. Yeah, if you have to change the rules to play, just don't. Just don't play. Yeah. Yeah, nah, none of it. Having none. It's of like it. that netball. Have you seen that netball? Not basketball. Netball. Have you seen that? Net, yeah, we've got netball. Netball is is. A, I don't a understand much, the game. No, it's a it's a much higher skilled, sometimes more brutal sport than than what basketball is. Um, really? Our our yeah our state team actually won the championship this year. The in the local like um, netball like the Australian netball competition. So um, yeah, netball is is. Uh, apparently not very popular over there if you you're saying this like you've just discovered it but it's like it's a very competitive sport and australia and new zealand are two of the top teams in the world so hmm yeah no i think everybody sees it as a joke I, over here at least I've, that's sort of how it's been presented is it's like oh yeah it's like no, it is, basketball it without a backboard and absolute like pansy version of basketball but apparently not much, apparently not i just need harder, to watch some more yeah. videos yeah, um, there's no there's no safety there's no backboard like you miss you miss that's it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Much okay, I'll have to check. Anyway, it out. we got to wrap this up. This is we this do has gone far too long. What episode are we on? One sixty one. One sixty one. Hey everybody, thanks for hanging out with this. Uh, North meets South. Audio slash one sixty one. Uh, find show notes there. Hit us up on Twitter at Jacob and at Michael Dorinda at North South Audio. Rate us up and put your podcast your choice. Five stars would be amazing. And if you happen to see me at Laracon US, please say hi, and you can sign my Michael Dorinda face poster board it'll be great and then i'll send it to you it'll be fun good times all right everybody we will see you in two weeks take it easy bye